In 2011, I was being warned by a therapist that I was close to a burnout. In 2012, when I finally had a financial breakthrough and proved my worth based on success and fame, I felt completely burnt out at the same time. Moving to London kickstarted my emotional and spiritual healing journey. But that was eight years ago. Why can I still feel so depleted most of the time, even when I know I can be social and empathetic with others? Do I really need more solitude in order to develop my own intuition? So I started this morning at 9.30 at this uh, place called Horsted Keys in West Sussex. I started at 9.30. I, I only took this, this route, filming and stuff, and then I realized it's still all about this. 
and I'm just looking around me it is cloudy it's miserable the hike goes very slowly because like 80 90 percent is walking through the mud so I'm not really sure if I'm even going to make like a silent vlogging video and just really focus on the topic of this video of today so in today's video I wanted to reflect on the topic like why is it that so many highly sensitive intuitive empathetic people struggle especially the introverts struggle so much with feelings of energetic depletion or burnout or total exhaustion constantly why is that so I wanted to share a bit of my own personal experience about it because I can totally relate to that uh, because also this week I've been through uh, and competence test from a life coach um, so I also kind of wanted to share my results with that because that also explains a lot with where I am currently at and of course perhaps you can you know you know lure some of these insights so again I'm here uh, doing a hike in West Sussex uh, it's a pretty long one I'm not really sure if I will be able, able to complete it perhaps I was thinking maybe I will do a little bit of a silent uh, you know nature relaxation walk I'm just not really quite sure because it's cloudy it's gray and I'm not really quite sure what the rest is going to do anyway I'm going to move a little bit further and then I will share a couple of more insights about this um, because this is quite important because in 2012 I struggled a lot with feelings of you know uh, of burnouts emotional depletion and I had no energy left at all anymore um, and then I went through a very intense personal transformation probably for the last eight years or so so that also changed a lot in myself my personality my way of thinking you know what feels right for me what doesn't feel right for me anymore um, so is this good is this bad is this going to work for the you know for the better for me or not really or should i learn to accept myself more of who i really am and i think that's a major key uh, insight the key elements that we have to you know further explore so i'm going to move a little bit further and then i will come back to this and share some more insights If I'm at home and if I go for a quick walk in my local park for an hour or so I always have a lot of ideas for creating content and, and, and topics to talk about and it really helps me to reflect on these topics right and, and, and develop more self-awareness about it and that was also like my initial intention with this whole YouTube channel like hey when I'm out for a nature walk and stuff like that always a lot of things are coming through me right but when I go for a day trip for a longer extension of time the rattling slows down and I often forget what it was that I was uh, supposed to talk about and it's like I become really one with nature anyway it's gonna be a topic for another video but in today's video again let's talk about burnout why so many highly sensitive empathetic intuitive introverted people struggle with feelings of burnout now of course I hope you are familiar with this thing between introvert and extrovert but being an introvert means is that you recharge yourself from solitude right from being with yourself could be like reading a book watching a movie going out in nature just spending time with yourself right an extrovert he gets energy from social events right being around other people now the funny thing is is that a lot of highly sensitive empathetic people they are actually also very social and they have also very strong communication skills but be, because they are so empathetic they can really relate to someone else right they can really see the world of someone else they are highly adaptable and really flexible they can really you know get on one line with someone now 
that's very nice of course because people they love talking to you because they feel you can really understand them right you will be doing great at being a life coach healer coach you know counselor you name it right but at the other side the other side of the spectrum means is that because you are highly adaptable in conversation is that sometimes you give too much of yourself in order to meet the other person and as an empath what you're often is what you're after is harmony right you thrive for harmony and you want peace right you're a peacemaker so when it comes to saying like you know what this is what i stand for this is my opinion this is what i think this is what i believe and even if that would mean let's say a an, an, an gentle or subtle thing of confrontation in a conversation that's something you prefer to avoid so when you are a highly sensitive or an empathetic individual and perhaps you had someone in your life could be a parents maybe maybe a partner a co-worker or you know an employer who was maybe a little bit emotional immature and if you take that a few steps further perhaps even a little bit narcissistic then what you're trying to do is to avoid conflict within a conversation because you are a peacemaker you want peace you want harmony and then what you do is you give so much of yourself that you lose yourself you lose yourself or your sense of autonomy and authenticity and you give away a part of your true self that also mean eventually long term is that you learn to shut down your own intuition listening to yourself listening to your own voice like what is it that feels good for you so maybe a few years later down the road you have taught yourself many patterns on how to survive in conversations in society in your work in your job environment and then you go out of balance you go way out of you know trying to be an extrovert too much you don't really balance it out of being accept yourself also as an introvert and then don't, you don't recharge yourself anymore and then you get to emotional depletion exhaustion burnout so this is a problem and I've recognized it in myself a lot and then a question of course is like okay so what can we do about it of course that's something we're going to explore a little bit further down the road from this point I decided to cut my hike because I already spent way too much filming plus the weather wasn't really getting any better Anyway, when you have spent years in a toxic relationship, you created a habit or a survival mechanism to please the other to maintain the peace and harmony. Adapting to the conditions and expectations of the other while shutting down your own intuition in the process. You lost touch with your own personal values, truth or autonomy, authenticity and intrinsic motivations. You became an empty shell that tried very hard to build an external package for yourself. Now even years later you still like to hold on to these old habits of survival. So when you are in a social conversation you still like to lead with A your false self and B your adaptability to to the values of others because you are unaware of your own values so here's the number one thing to maintain your energy level as an empath develop more decisiveness by showing your boundaries what is it that you stand for what do you believe what is your opinion what do you feel or think don't have anything in common just simply move on. 